thank you for the privilege of your time this morning and allowing me to share some timeless and authoritative words of truth from God's Word with you. It is a new day in the grace of God and the new day of the kingdom of God is coming. Well, we certainly long for that day and we walk in faith and we persevere until that day becomes a reality. Now, this morning we read in John 10, verse 10, that the words of Jesus, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The thief has a self-centered agenda, whereas our good shepherd has an other-centered agenda. The thief is about pillaging, death, and destruction as he sees beneficial only for himself. But Jesus exhibits the ultimate in loving compassion for the good of others. Indeed, the contrast could not be greater. A nearly endless torrent of death and destruction is reported nearly every day. And there can be little doubt that our enemy, the devil, has a very powerful stronghold in the world today. Well, this is his time and his hour, but it will not last. He has an appointment with the lake of fire when he is ultimately reined in by the one who has the right to rule this world. He today offers abundant life to all who are willing to receive it. Now, abundant life can be realized in part today as we await its fullness in the future. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 says, Having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession to the praise of his glory. So the Spirit is God's seal of approval on us as we wait for the complete re realization of our hope. Holy Spirit, we might say, is the earnest money that is promising of the complete payment at the return of Christ when we will be given the gift of immortality, the true abundant life that Jesus promises as recorded in John 10:10. 10, 10. The prospect of what is to come, coupled with the present spirit down payment, is cause for eternal optimism. Regardless of our present circumstances, something better is in store for us. It is the hope of tomorrow embedded in the reality of today. The abundant life ought not to be confused with a materially prosperous life. And sadly, a prosperity gospel attracts large crowds and followings with the alluring promise that God's will is to prosper his people's bank accounts. The real beneficiaries are the coffers of the churches that make such claims. It is not a given that God's people are consigned to poverty in this world, but the abundant life of immortality far eclipses anything that this world can offer. It is promised in Isaiah 40, verse 31, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will <clears throat> mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get, weary, uh, get tired. They will walk and not become weary. The abundant life is new strength and boundless energy. We wait for our Father to bestow this great gift through His Son at Jesus' return to earth. And we walk in faith. We wait in faith. We see the unseeable through eyes of faith. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, according to Hebrews 11, verse 1. Well, we long now for the day when the waiting will be over. Today may be filled with burdens that seem almost too great to bear. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 and 17 states, Therefore we do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. For momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comprehension. Now our present struggles may hardly seem like momentary light affliction, but they indeed are producing, as it says, an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. So we press on. 
The difficult refining of today's trials are indeed producing in us character that makes us fit for the abundant life of the age to come. When faith becomes sight, we will never regret the sometimes difficult path that led us to that glorious future. Know that the hope of tomorrow is embedded in the reality of today. The life of the age to come is cause for eternal optimism. Whatever this age holds for us, be it pleasure or be it pain, it is short and it is seasonal. Hope springs eternal for those grounded in the hope of the age to come. Let's conclude our time this morning in prayer. Father God, how thankful we are for the promise of the abundant life, according to the words of Jesus. We are thankful that we have a down payment of that. We are thankful that Holy Spirit is given to remind us of the full realization of what is to come. And of course, we are so thankful for that spirit, which truly represents the inner presence of Christ in our lives. And it is also, Father, that dynamic power that is uniquely yours. So we are thankful we have the presence and we have the power to guide us through this age, but we are reminded of the coming promise of the abundant life, life of the age to come, immortality, resurrection. Oh, we can scarcely comprehend it, but we so very much long for it and we desire that nothing would deter us from the realization of that hope at the return of Christ. And so with eyes of faith, we press on. We press on through this day, and this day holds some things that we may not be, certainly we're not aware of as we begin the day. We trust that it would be a pleasurable day, but there may be pain in this day. Father, whatever it is, we know that it is light and momentary. We know that it will only last a short season in the grand scheme of things, eternity that is forever overshadows it. So Father, ever remind us of our hope, ever remind us of what you have planned for us. May we be guided and encouraged in that. May we freely share of that hope and the faith that we have in that hope with others who need it today. Give us opportunities to reach out to those who are in pain, those who are going through the light and momentary afflictions of this age, that we might encourage and bless them. Guide our day. We come before you, Father, to acknowledge that you are ahead of all, you are in charge of all, and that you placed your son Jesus as head of the church, head of our lives, and it's our desire that we be a responsive body to Christ the head. Lord Jesus, speak to us where you would have us be, what you would have us to do, how you would direct our activities, because we seek to be fully obedient. We thank you for these moments. We thank you for each person who has joined, and we just pray that each one might be blessed and encouraged as we mark out this day. Keep us within your will. Keep us faithful until the end. We pray, Lord Jesus, in your name. Amen. Once again, I thank you for these moments to share this morning. I trust that uh, the Lord guide and direct you throughout this day. And I pray that you've been encouraged and blessed by the scriptures we've shared uh, and, and the meaning of those verses and, and how they can guide us and encourage us today. So I pray God's blessing upon you as we go forward from this time. I look forward to being able to join with you in a future time. Until that time, God guard and guide you. And so long then, and God bless. Mm -hmm.